It's such a beautiful day. I thought it's a great time to take you around for a fall 2020 walkabout. Come along. What a year it's been. What a season it's been. COVID year. Everybody will remember 2020. <laughs> it will be a reference point in your future. 2020 is a year that it's actually a great year because it's forced people to be and to think differently. I want to just give you a walkabout in the permaculture orchard to see some of the things that that have happened not that much because it's been pretty quiet but one of the things I wanted to point out to you first before we start is just what happens in such an orchard or what happens in the forest you may not have observed so well but you notice there's not many leaves left in the trees. I mean, the trees are pretty well bare. There are still some, there are still some leaves on shrubs. Here's gooseberry, here's raspberry. You see, there's still some leaves. And look at this, in the herbaceous layer, there's still green plants. And that's a good example to show you what happens in a forest, but what will happen in your food forest or permaculture orchard is plants know how to get the most of the season. So one of the things with all of these perennial plants or ground covers or herbs, whatever, is that they are usually spring plants. What are spring plants? Plants that are the first to come out and develop and take advantage of the sun because the springtime is a lot like this. You'll have plants that are green before anything else. The trees are, have no leaves, the buds haven't popped, the shrubs, some of them will be starting. And the sh So the order of it is first of all, you get some green in the perennials, the ones that are closest to the ground, least likely to frost. Then you get some of the shrubs Basically, they're sort of woodland or woodland edge shrubs. They will green up, but there's still no leaves in the trees. And that's the reason for spring plants. They have to literally make hay while the sun shines, shines down on the lower levels before the trees shade them. So a lot of times you'll see a spring plant, a, a daylily is a good example. It will be completely grown before the leaves are fully out. Rhubarb's the same, chives, chives too. They will be really out a lot before any of that happens. And then the leaves come out and they are just, basically, they're just maintaining. A lot of times they've either flowered already or they're just ripening some seeds through the summer. And then, in the fall, it's, the, it's sort of the same thing that happens a second time. So the trees lose their leaves, and then gradually you get to where the shrubs will gradually lose their leaves, and the final one are the ground covers, and just have some grass here. But grass is, uh, there's a, a, a mat of grass that was growing on the plastic. So they are still green because they're taking advantage of that fall sun and putting down reserves. As long as they're green, they're putting up reserves. And somebody was asking about pruning raspberries. I think I'll do a video on that. But I may want to just put a clip in here to show you and explain why these are fall bearing raspberries, not doing well anymore at all, but they're still here. Why not prune your raspberries in the fall? Simply because as long as there's green leaves, this plant's roots, this raspberry's roots, are still growing, are still being fed. And so you don't want to be cutting this one down now until basically 
all the leaves are off and here most of the time that's once we get snow sometimes if it's getting mid-december and we haven't had enough snow yet they'll have lost their leaves you could do it then but i i like doing all of the pruning of the spring plants and raspberry is a spring plant because it springs out early uh, I like to do them in the springtime or late winter early spring so that just gives you a look at plants that have a strategy to to really survive and thrive even though they're not getting as much light raspberries are actually not really a spring plant they're yeah, they're a summer plant. They're a woodland edge. They're not a woodland species. They're not really growing in the woodland. They're growing on the edge of the woodland. So to, to update you a little bit on what's gone on, we had, uh, we had Sebastian mainly. So, how do you think of it? <laughs> Big job, huh? <laughs> but it looks so different. One big branch, five big branches, and a whole lot more big branches. As an, in, as a, an intern this spring, he was here last fall. And uh, when he left in early June and COVID and all the restrictions, we just decided, you know what, this year, we're not holding any public events, no, no courses, no workshops, no tours and we didn't have we only had three two harvest dates this year basically the orchard was not very productive this year and boy thankfully because if we had had a year like we did last year which was such a huge production year that would have hurt because of restrictions and so on so it was a good job you know as bad as it is it, there is a good side to it so we made the most out of it. Oh, here's one. Since I was talking about ground covers, take a look at this one. And this is, see how the green, it really froze. We had minus seven. So that, that froze down, but this is sorrel. And when you get them after they frosted this hard, oh, I wish you could taste this. It's a little lemony but you actually get the sweetness coming out of sorrel. It's really delightful. So this is the time of year I like it the most, after it's frosted. Um, and they do really well. But again, it's a spring plant. Takes advantage of the extra light in the spring and really gets going on a, a second round late in the fall and grows some more leaves and puts down reserves in the roots. Mmm. Delicious. So go see that, the pleasures of the permaculture orchard. This is really one of the pleasures. Yes, going on a walkabout, taking a walk around, and just eating and tasting the different things that have been produced. So we didn't have a lot of production this year. After last year's record, record year, a lot of the trees just decided, you know what, I gave you two years of crop last year. I'm gonna, I deserve a break. And yeah, they do, because we don't fertilize. And I'm toying with the idea of fertilizing next year, just to see, basically to see, to get that flow from going high one year and low the next, to try and see if we can even it out a lot more. And I'm sure we can, but Right now, the trees have been on a totally natural cycle and they do what trees often do in that case is they alternate bare. So they produce every second year. The juice of these can be... Mm. Oh, no. Actually, it fermented. Yeah, it fermented, wow. That means it frosted and then Ooh. 
cider already on the tree. Not what I was expecting. I usually like them in the winter while I'm pruning. Look at this. Not what you should have in an orchard, right? Oak trees. Here's some of the white oaks. Uh, we're trying a bunch of plants, and oak is one of them. It's been a great year to just enjoy the orchard again. We've been just coming out as a family and enjoying the orchard. We've had a lot of people over the last few years here, either staying for time, uh, interns, a lot of visitors. And it's been nice to be closed. Just to everything, there is a season. And this was a season of just enjoying the place to ourselves. You say, well, I don't want to have a public. And probably, maybe you won't. Maybe you won't have anybody come visit and it's all yours. I've been okay with opening up the farm and opening up the orchard and having other people come and experience it and see it and visit and tour and so on. But it makes that it's more, it's often more of a public place than a private place. And it was nice to have it as a private place once again. And that's okay. We'll have lots of public times in the years to come, hopefully. And like I said, we canceled all of the, all of the public events. I've already, um, I haven't scheduled them in, but I, I have, we're going to do a, a five day course late summer next year, one in English and one in French. We're going to have at least six workshops from spring through summer. Um, so I'll be announcing that if you're interested, I would say, sure, don't, if you see it announced, don't wait too long because there's been a lot of people inquire about them already. And so when I announce them, they will probably fill up pretty quickly. Uh, right now, if I announce them, I, we don't know. I, I still think we're going to go through this for a second year and we may have restrictions again next year, but that's all right. We'll see and we'll just be flexible with how things develop. I'm still in the process of, of just getting the farm, the orchard ready for winter. And if you see here looking, see that hasn't even been mowed this year. I didn't mow and I didn't even roller crimp. You want to go see those videos on roller crimping. It's a great technique. I just missed the timing. There is a perfect time in July, usually up to early August. And then we got quite a bit of rain this summer. We had very dry this spring. So much so that the seeded orchard really didn't work at all because it was as soon as the snow melted, we pretty well had six weeks of no rain. And in this sandy soil, you see this sand, how is it? This is sand. I mean, here. You ready for this? I mean, this is our soil in the fall when it's moist. So it's just sand and in this sand it's hard for the conditions to be moist enough for seeds to germinate unless we have rains and i didn't put irrigation on those seeds i wanted them really to grow on their own but i wasn't expecting that long of a dry period but that's how it happens and so i didn't roll these aisles at all we mowed a few simply because it coincided with the date we we're open for the fall so that people can come and pick. And I like to mow the aisles that people are going to come and pick. And so actually these have still quite a bit of, have still some fruit left in them. So there will be courses next year, workshops, and we'll have a spring and a fall tour as we usually normally do but we didn't have this year. Fortunately, we had the virtual tour, and if you don't know about it or haven't seen it, go check it out at miracle.farm. You can take the tour as if you came for a tour. You don't have to wait till next year. And it's as good as 
being here. It's the closest we can get to you actually being here, but as far as content goes, there's more than if you came for a tour because we could get it all in. We can never get it all in in a tour. We always deviate by questions and, and so on. So some of these, see there's quite a bit of fruit. I didn't clean up. I didn't clean up because I just didn't clean up. But I know that if we do get a lot of voles this winter and it's not showing up to be that bad, then having some fruit on the ground is a nice little insurance, keeps them off. And we got a lot of young rootstock in, in here that we could dig next spring. One of the workshops will be propagation. And so we'll be digging up rootstock and grafting them. So it's there. And if they all get eaten, then not much to graft on. So leaving apples on the ground really deflects the voles. They always prefer the fruit above the bark and they may be very happy with that. So having seen the cycles in the voles, having seen how from year to year, oh look at that, still a wasp around. We're, we're early November and we already had, we had snow and we had some cold weather and we really had two nights of colder weather. I was able to wrap the pump up. I hope to do a video, whether it's going to be before or after this one on how we close up the water system or the irrigation system. Oh, maybe you could see that. The snow geese have just taken off. I'll let them talk. Isn't that a treat? I never get tired of that. <laughs> so they've been coming on the lake next door. They just started. This has only been a week that the snow geese have really come in. There were a few earlier, but that's nice. The, the, the lake next door has grown because they're actively extracting sand and gravel. In the past, we've had eight or 9,000 geese at some point. I think there's enough water there to hold 10,000 geese as well. So that would be nice. I always like to see huge flocks of snow geese around. I'll go show you a clip of what they're actually doing next door. It gets a little noisy when we're at the back. This is the old organic apple orchard. We just put out some wood chips this morning. We've been adding some wood chips gradually. Give you a look at. So rows that we haven't picked like this one. I just mow one pass. And I mowed, I didn't roll it. I mowed because I missed the perfect time for roller crimping. But all I do is I leave just a passage so we can get through. But where people are gonna pick, then in the week or two before we pick that row, I come in and I mow more so that it's easier. So this one, for example, had picked, was picked. So there's more space mowed. Here's some of the, the wood chips we did. We did these this morning. So go see that video on mulching with wood chips. And it's uh, every little bit helps. These are older trees, but if we give them just that, we've seen in the past, they really, they really respond well. I wish I had truckloads of wood chips come in, but I just don't and it's, it's hard to get around here. People value wood chips here, which is a good thing. 
and unless we pay for them we don't get them but we can rarely get them so anytime we can I'll pay for them gladly because they're well worth it the seeded orchard area see how overgrown that's become they're busy busy next door and I like having a, a gravel pit next door you think what it's dusty yes but dust is so useful <coughs> <coughs> not coughing because it's dusty I swallowed a bug there's a lot of activity a lot of activity lately because all of their projects have uh, finished for the season so all the crew is working at building up reserves of sand and gravel for next year and one of the neat things is we got a lake that's growing next door. I mean growing. This spring, the shore here was about here. I know because when we could stand here and this was the shore. So they've dug from here. This was where the, the edge was. The lake stopped here. So they've dug all of this out this summer. And see now they're over here. So that's, a, from here to here, that's many, many tons and tons, a mountain, actually a few mountains of sand and gravel that has gone out, which is great for us because the, uh, the lake has grown and nothing in there is really of interest to the pests in the orchard. It really creates a complete buffer on one side that has no wintering sheltering habitat at all so that's great I've been pretty well occupied the last two months with putting together uh, an online course for France so normally yeah about next week usually mid by mid November we're gone on tour in Europe for a month and this week everything is cancelled uh, this year everything is cancelled because of COVID restrictions and flying we couldn't fly there anyway and so there is no Europe tour but we still had bookings so I've been working and I'm almost almost done putting together the online course to basically replace being there it won't be the same but on some, in some ways it's actually better because if you come to a course and you're listening and you're hearing and you're taking notes, there's a lot of times things just go right by. You hear something and maybe you made a note, you didn't take all the details down because you didn't think, well, yeah, that's okay, but I'm not there yet. I'm not doing that yet. And so one of the great things about online is you learn it and then when you're at that stage you just go back and listen to it again you go ah yeah yeah now I need this stuff so now now I'm gonna do that or apply that and you have the information available so first round is to do it in French and yes oui je parle français and I we usually do a tour Belgium France uh, Switzerland we've done Sweden we've done Western Switzerland and so on so there's a few countries in Europe that we've traveled to to, to do the courses and but it'll be interesting so this is a trial run you're listening in English and you go oh that's great I haven't got it in English done yet the French one will be the trial run so if anything the English version should be even better because I will be able to refine if I've omitted things, if I didn't put something in, it'll be in there. So maybe this winter, I'll see how this one goes and maybe this winter I'll, well, I would have to finish it, not just start it. Uh, so that would be great to have basically the master class online. And maybe it wouldn't be available until after we can film next year's on site right here and that would be a great addition because there's nothing like making it seem like you're right here with me 
to learn the stuff. That's probably why you're here right now. Is you're here because you like to learn. Sorry, I got distracted by a bird again, right? Because I see, well, you don't see it in the distance. There's one snow goose sitting on the shore down there. That usually means he's been shot and he can't fly. So he goes out and eats the grass. We'll see if he can recover before the pond or the lake freezes over. I'll show you the chickens. There's no more chickens. We gave them away. I didn't even ask if anybody wanted them because there are some uh, local, we call them the kids, but they're younger people with a, a young child who have been doing vegetables in our area and they had a, just a few chickens so we gave them all our chickens to really get them going on chickens. But they did well. The chickens had a really good season. I always like having laying hens are just fantastic. We I put everything almost away. The water is still out because we haven't blown the water out. We've emptied all the pipes and put away all the fencing. But look at the difference, see? Look at look at after the chickens have been in here. This is and animals will do the equivalent of a roller crimping. So you think, oh, I don't have the machine. Get some animals. Here's the pen that they wintered in last year, mind you. I'm not sure if the skunk will be in here. Because one day I came here and I thought, hmm, smells a bit skunky. And I opened the box here and the skunk was sitting right in there. And it was okay with me. It was kind of annoyed. It didn't threaten, but it was annoyed that I disturbed its sleep. So that's all they have. This is a super, super simple pen. And one of the things I had in plan to do, sometimes it takes more than one year to do it, but is to raise this up and put this on two bikes. So we're gonna put a frame with two mountain bikes held together and the, the pen will be higher. So the skunk basically won't have access if it comes in. They shouldn't come in, but they do come in. And so here's a little look at, see, this is the equivalent of roller crimping. The grass gets matted down. And here the chickens were, but not as often, or not as, not as much. And then here was the fence. So all this was fenced back there. And here, this didn't have chickens. So you see the difference? The grass is just all sitting upright, as opposed to, when the birds are in, the grass is all matted down. So this, we're not talking about a, a flock of a few hundred birds here. This was 12 birds. 12 birds had an effect. We had more birds, but we got six of them stolen. <laughs> of all things, we had, oh yeah, we had a robbery this summer. Uh, it happens every so many years. I was surprised that we had chickens robbed though, but people are more desperate this year than other years. But here's a really good look of the work they did. And they are great under the nut. This is hazelnuts mostly in here. Look at how nicely they've cleaned this up in here. They scratched all the ground up, manure it, mixed the leaves in. So. It, they do a great job, a great job of preparing the soil. So I like what, go see Jeff had a video on how he integrates and plants out pieces of his food forest by basically putting the chickens in and then some more snow geese, putting the chickens in and then after coming back and planting, I could, of course, because after the chickens have been in, if we wanted to plant in here or do something in here, this soil is, it's tilled, partly tilled at the surface, which is exactly the kind of tillage you want. You don't need, usually you don't need deep tillage. And it's disturbed, ready to, ready to go to be planted out with 
with some trees. So bye-bye chickens. They're gone to a better home for the winter, hopefully. And even here, this is where they were uh, two or three weeks prior. So the grass is mostly down, a few stems sticking up. But a great job. And where, this was where the pen was one night. Wherever the pen was, see the, you may not see it that well, but these are lines of fertilizer. Here's chicken manure breaking down already. Because wherever the pen was and they roost, since they're roosting there, they basically create a line of manure. So I absolutely would love to have a lot more animals in the orchard because they do work better than what we could do. Like we wouldn't spend the time to do the kind of close, careful <laughs> weeding and tilling that they do. And they love it, that's what they wanna do. So let them do it. Oh, I forgot to put this away. The electric wire pole. That's part of closing up and putting things away. Oh yes, the two of them were here. We had a lot of birds. We had some new birds. We saw there was a brown thrasher nest in one of these low apple trees in here. Not this one, but we passed it back there. Look at this. What, you, you can recognize that? Sage. It's really doing very nicely. It usually freeze dries. That's kind of the story of this year. Part of the preparation for next year. Who knows what next year will be. You can plan all you like, but you know what? Things happen, things surprise you, things you don't expect. Nobody expected COVID to be such a thing this year. So yes, it changes the season. Be ready for change. I like to say, I like to get ready mentally and say, what's the worst thing that can happen to the orchard? Okay, what would be the worst? Maybe we'd have a fire, if we had a really dry period, a fire would come in and just, we have the plastic mulch, so it could burn the plastic mulch and just burn through and kill all the trees. And you know what? I would be, I'd be a little disappointed, but on the other hand, I'd almost be a little relieved. But you know what? I'd be okay with that. So I would say for you, Picture in your head, imagine, what would be the absolute worst case for your project? What would be, you know, devastating, disastrous? And once you mentally play through that, and then you go, yeah, I'd be okay with it. I mean, it would happen, it would suck, it would not be fun. But it's not the end of the world. It happens and people have lost projects. Look at all the fires and anyway, I won't get into the fires, but things happen. Be ready for it. I like to say, so we got robbed, you know? Yeah, okay. This is what the ninth or 10th time we've been robbed. I'm used to it. Yes, cameras and so on. They help, but they don't necessarily do everything everywhere all the time. So just be okay with whatever the worst situation can be. And then, you know what? Why should you stress about it? That's the way I look at it. Oh, somebody came in here, I see. Oh, wow. Looks like the woodpecker, I haven't seen this for a while. Looks like the woodpecker got in here 
and actually went through and pecked most of these bee holes out and I see here is a hole so it must have got in by here I didn't know this was open uh, that's too bad you know what that sucks but it's not the end of the world in fact this one too for some reason oh, I guess they could have come in here at the bottom wow they ate up just to give you a comparison I know they didn't get in here because we put a better mesh and look at how full those are so these were all full like that equally full of uh, bees this is mostly leaf cutter bees so there may be less there will certainly be a lot less emerging leaf cutter bees but there's always an abundance of them so hey you know what stuff happens get over it when you plant trees trees die get over it you plant trees and you expect to harvest and then it doesn't happen get over it just stuff happens it, it's don't let the situation rob you of your joy why it's not worth it so yeah but I say okay there is a situation deal with it plan around it see if you can do something so it doesn't happen again but you know what if it's not this one it's another thing farming is not an indoor super controlled activity there are so many unexpected did you expect that it was going to be a big vol year and they ate up a whole bunch of trees did you expect that we would have covid well, you say that's not weather related no it's human related but it's the first time in a hundred years that we have so that we've had a pandemic did you expect that there would be no crop well i kind of expected i was mentally i was ready for it but you will have to learn to expect the unexpected be okay with things not working out so we started here was a project we start we did a couple of rows this is a ladder so i i go up the ladder here and i attach the overhead wire there to these honey locusts and so we did these rows so the wire is up in position and i pruned some of these rows so these rows are ready to go through so that's a nice thing to do at this time of year doesn't have to be really warm weather so that's what we've been doing and so they were catching up on some projects if you haven't been exposed go see Richard Perkins channel I always admired Richard's uh, diligence and zeal like he gets stuff done he's a beast in terms of his, his work ability and his ethic and his stick to itness it helps to have 20 years like if I think back 20 years ago yeah I could I could hit it pretty hard but he's also a great planner in planning the work an organizer to help get organized to have the people to help him do the work and so these are all elements but yeah go check out Richard Perkins channel he's got great great information uh, regenerative his new book regenerative agriculture I've been enjoying here maybe they'll come right away I've been enjoying having the chickadees here really quickly come and check me out because oh, I don't have any seeds left but they've been super tamed here whoops see there look at that as soon as I put my hand out there they're basically here ready for some seeds and I don't like to fool it like I did this time but just now it's pecking my thumb just to show you how they've become really used to me giving them some food sorry chickadee here I'll give you an apple instead that's not what you want because you can get apples Maybe I have one sunflower seed. 
I gave them all to you already. Oh yes, I have a few. Here, three sunflower seeds. I'll let you enjoy it. Come on. Whoops. Come on. One of the pleasures of the permaculture orchard. Sorry, now I have none left for you. So get your birds trained up and ready to just come eat out of your hand. And that's kind of a look at this fall 2020 walkabout. A wonderfully different year. Look at the bright side because there's always a bright side to look at. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the Permaculture Orchard. Have trees already? PruningCourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye. And enjoy the progress of your project. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.